name is Dave Klein. I'm a senior producer for GameSpot and Fandom, but that doesn't matter. What's important is it's time for some potatoes. So please give a round of applause to the Hobbits. convention right now. I mean, this looks like, oh my god, there's a lot of you with phones. Look at those phones. So many phones. Doesn't make you think of the claw. The claw. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us. We brought you guys all here today for a big announcement. Lord of the Rings 4 next year. This time it's personal. LA kind of got exclusive. I'm playing Gollum. <laughs> Alright, so I have a bunch of questions for all of you before we get to audience questions. The first of it being that it has been 20 years since Woo! the Fellowship of the Rings. Yeah. And that means that you have had 20 years to read Lord of the Rings. So if I show of hands, who has read Lord of the Rings? I don't believe this. So explain yourself. I think everything's being directed at me. Uh, uh, I think I'm the sole member of this cast that has not read the books. So I still have... I know. You're still perfect as Frodo. I just want to say that. Well, speaking of that, uh, Sean, I recall that you thought when you first got the audition that it was for Phantom Tollbooth. Yeah. Do you sometimes look back and wish that you were instead cast in the Phantom Tollbooth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, can I do both? I, I have to choose one or the other. I remember Milo. You would have been a much, you would have been a really good Milo when oh, you were young. Uh, you know, I love that book. Um, yes, the Phantom Tollbooth. There's other ones too. Anyhow, here we are now, 20 years later, having performed in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. By the way, I think next year it's going to be 25 years since we started shooting. <laughs> because we, we went down to New Zealand in August of 1999 to start prepping, and then we started shooting in October of 99. So, I think next October, it's 25 years, right? <laughs> Crazy. A quarter Crazy. of a century! Well, I'm 52, so that means it's almost half of my life ago. That's the way age works, by the way. <laughs> my wife and I have been married 32 years, so I'm so poor. You know my wife? You guys know Christine? She is awesome. She is awesome. And she's patient. She's awesome. You know, if she'd have killed you, she would have been out in 20 years. <laughs> the same. So we could have done Lord of the Rings, and she now she'd be on the street. She'd be free. She'd be free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking on 20 years and 25 <laughs> years, is there any chance that we might see something like what we saw with Harry Potter or Friends with a big reunion special? Because I'm sure everyone here would love to see that. <laughs> We have been talking about, because these, these 20th anniversaries have been happening over the course of three years, it's three movies. This December marks the 20th anniversary of the release of Return of the King. So we're at the tail end of, of, a, of a series of 20th anniversaries, and this entire time we've been talking about trying to organize something, and it just hasn't come together. So should there be but Colbert an anniversary the or a Col reason to get together? We would love a reunion. Colbert did the best one. That was amazing. The number one trilly was pretty. Lord of the Rings is the number one trilly. Lord of the Rings. Honestly, that was the closest thing to a kind yeah, of. Yeah, he cares story. enough about it, uh, Stephen Colbert, that he went out of his way. His people wrote it. They called us up. They put it together. They filmed it. Like, Warner Brothers, what's up? <laughs> they got Method Man in the video. I yeah. think we're waiting. I, 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 think, actually, I think we're waiting for the 50th. That's what, that's what I'm doing. I think that's the new trend. You guys are going to We're nearly, we're 20, 20, 25 more years. That's me. Okay, 103, almost my 111th birthday. Uh, we, <laughs> I don't know. Elon will design something to keep us going. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would, be, it would be really, really cool. I mean, Rings of Power came out. They put a ton of time, energy, money, effort, passion creativity into that, you know, so. Well, there's there's also supposed to be uh, another series of movies they're talking about. Um, 
made in New Zealand. Uh, it was announced that they, we don't know what those movies are going to be, but presumably there's going to be more time spent in Middle Earth uh, playing in Tolkien's sandbox, so to speak. Do you think so, we'll be put into songs or tales? Hey, listen, I would love to. <laughs> Now, looking back 20 years, uh, what are some of your fondest memories that come to mind? I mean, Not that you can say in public. <laughs> there was a lost weekend that Billy and Dom had uh, in Twizel. Has anyone ever been to Twizel in New Zealand? Wow, really? A, a Twizel fan? Yeah. Someone from Twizel? Yes! Yeah. Security! Uh, I'll, let, I'll let them tell the story, but it's one of my favorite, favorite stories of Billy and Dom ever. Well, it's somewhere on camera, but we just, we've lost that. It's the lost tapes, isn't it, Billy? Billy I has it, I think, in his flat in Glasgow. I've got them somewhere. What happened was, we went down to Twizel in the South Island. Thank you. Twizel. Me and Dom were supposed to have time off. <laughs> this is Dom on my right here. <laughs> and uh, Sean and Elijah were filming, you know, Frodo and Sam basically just walk up a hill for the whole of the three movies <laughs> while we're doing all the work. So while they were doing this, they said, look, we need weather cover in case it rains. So would you and Dom come down to Twizel? And get a, get a house together and just wait. And if it rains, you'll work. And if it doesn't rain, you'll just have some time off. So me and Dom, it didn't rain. It didn't rain. We got a huge case of wine and a lot of movies. And we blacked out the windows and we made a movie. It wasn't just wine. We made... <laughs> That's hilarious. We made a movie. <laughs> With their the clothes on. In Twizel. <laughs> and somewhere that movie is in Billy's flat in Glasgow. I crashed uh, Sean Bean's car down there. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I reversed it into a tree. I sideswiped a tree. <laughs> and then before I gave it back, I put a whole trout in the boot of his car. So he drove around with his car, uh, in his car with a whole trout. It for a few weeks. And, and one morning, I woke, out me when he found out. I woke up and I thought, I'm going to get the camera because I could hear Dom downstairs. And I walked downstairs with the camera <laughs> and I went into the living room and he's standing against the fireplace, naked, smoking a pipe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that happened in Twizel. <laughs> to hear Billy's, I don't know if I know from your perspective, when we got to go to Auckland to the America's Cup regatta, and they put us on the billion dollar yacht. Yeah. What, what did you think of that experience? Sean, I loved it very much. <laughs> we, we watched the, a thing called the America's Cup. Yeah, he did just say that. Uh, it's a regatta. A regatta where a lot of rich people race their yachts but they let us on the, uh, the most expensive yacht uh, it was it was nowhere near uh, Twizel. <laughs> we, we drank a lot of champagne on that yacht from my recollection orlando bloom fell asleep mm -hmm. i remember really? that did he really and he woke up and he said where's my white wine is that where where's that's my where white wine came from yeah that's where it's <laughs> from the yacht. Yeah. I don't remember. The weird thing is, is that, you know, there's a lot of experiences that we all collectively had, and many that we had and shared together, and we are actually great, a, a great patchwork of our individual memories, because what I will forget, they will remember, and vice versa. It totally happens all the time, mm -hmm. where they'll forget a detail, and I'll remember a whole thing. I don't remember being on the yacht at all. <laughs> I remember going up to the spire. Uh, the, yeah. the, 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 the whatever that tower is in, in Auckland. I don't remember going Sky up the yacht. Yeah. yeah. That's, it must have been a great night. That's, that's baller. He doesn't remember one of the many billion dollar yachts. <laughs> I swear that may have been one of the only billion dollar yachts I've ever been on. It was, and we got in trouble. Like, the movie hadn't come out yet. We, we weren't popular or anything. We were just sort of like, you know, a bunch of guys. And, and we get to the yacht, and they said, take your shoes off. 
They didn't say it nice. Oh, it's coming into focus now. Take your shoes off. And we were like, oh, okay, because we basically were treating the country like it was our living room, like we were on the top of mountains and down in fjords and wherever you wanted. But on the yacht, take your socks and shoes off. So, yeah, that was, I remember that. I remember because then they said, the carpet in this yacht is $50,000 a square foot, something like that. Oh my and God. I, then I was just doing the math Ew. and trying to work out the square footage <laughs> of how much this carpet would cost. And Elijah didn't take his socks and shoes off and he just started throwing $100 towards him. <laughs> and he took his trousers off. He was wearing his golf cleats. No, wait, it wasn't. No, but we, it was really cool because the way the, the buoys were, like a kind of a diamond, they, they Boys, would race, the they would race like this, and the only boats that would be allowed to go in the middle of what is the race course, basically the middle of the ocean, was the, was the, the media ship and this yacht. And so we got to see the America's Cup, which is like, you know, televised all over the world, really, really cl up close. And that was, I remember thinking that was why it was good to be in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> So, this makes me wonder, because I know you had some onset injuries, like a really horribly tiny splinter. Oh. But, what were your worst injuries now, outside of set? Injuries? Yeah, that didn't happen oh, on I set. I some injuries. I got my heart broken a couple of times. <laughs> oh, you laugh, but it's devastating. It is devastating. I uh, asked Billy to come out for dinner with me, and he said no, he was busy. And I just thought... <laughs> Friday night, we're supposed to be friends, but you had bigger fish to fry, didn't you? <laughs> I did have a fish to fry, actually. Mm -hmm. You broke a few hearts as well. Well, that was accidental. <laughs> there was no, I had no injuries I could think of at offset. Yeah. My injuries were onset. <laughs> you know, um, um, Vigo had a pretty massive injury offset. He, he went surfing the day before. We were shooting the cave troll sequence. With us. Yeah, and he went surfing the day before knocked his face with his board and like, it, it, you know, came out of the water and hit him in the, in the face, got a black eye, and he walks on the set in full Aragorn costume with a giant black eye. Yeah. Peter just looked at him and went, yep, okay. And and the other the black eyes, his whole face looked like oh, hammer. Yeah, there's, a, there's a few little moments in Moria where they only shoot Aragorn from profile because you can't shoot the other side because his eye was already black. It's amazing. I got to see when Peter Jackson sort of was walking towards the edge of the, it was just a warehouse and and Vigo had not presented himself yet. And he comes in and the two men meet and yeah, Peter inspects him for a little bit. And you don't know what the reaction is gonna be. You know, compassion, anger, fury, you, know, you don't know what, you know, you're ruining my movie, whatever it is. He just looks at him and he goes, excellent, and walks out. <laughs> yep. Also, I don't know if you guys, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but uh, Orlando fell off a horse and I think he broke his rib. He might have, uh, not today, either broke it or just really badly bruised it. That's true. He didn't talk about it that much. We had to find out from a third party, but supposedly he broke his rib. Yeah. I broke my pinky. <laughs> I broke my pinky surfing as well. You know, there's a little hole in the back of a surfboard and I grabbed it and a wave came and it snapped my pinky. Aye. And uh, the, the doctor said it had to be held straight like that. But obviously it was like a hospital thing. And uh, I couldn't have that on film. So the guys at Weta made a pinky that I could then slip <laughs> onto my pinky to keep it straight. So in Moria, you'll see that when I'm holding the sword, my pinky's like that. <laughs> And it's not my pinky. Oh, my right. pinky's inside the pinky. <laughs> <laughs> like a Russian doll pinky. <laughs> I, I can't go another minute without at least telling one set injury story. Somehow, I developed uh, an allergic reaction to horses. You guys are so thoughtful, and I appreciate that. It was, I was always able to ride horses growing up, but somehow I get on one of these horses when we're heading towards somewhere where we're on horses, and build a pony, you know, you love build a pony, and the, the level of snot and puffiness of my eyes was, you, you know, and I, it was terrible. We all just thought he was doing a golem impression. 
I couldn't believe it. Any time I'd have to go, and we didn't have, what's the stuff you take for, like, allergic reactions? Antihistamines. Something like that. Sudafed? Sudafed. No, my wife gives me a tablet around Zer the Zer Zertec? Zertec? Antihistamine, chill. Benadryl. 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 No, Benadryl. Yeah, you should tie it though. Yeah. Need Benadryl. Yeah. Not yeah. Benadryl. There's like a little thing that dissolves in your mouth and then you can... Claritin. Claritin, Claritin. thank you. Just mentioning drugs. They didn't have that. Benadryl. 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 With the surfboard, the exact same way, yeah. That's quite treacherous. Right in the face. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm about to be a father, and that makes me wonder. Oh, no. Thank you. Oh, two weeks. Oh, buddy. December 15th. Yeah, ready. It's the greatest. Yeah. So that your does... life's about to change. <laughs> yes, too. I'm very excited. Yeah. So that makes me wonder for those of you with kids, um, have they seen Lord of the Rings yet? And if so, what do they think of you in the film? My kids are too young. They haven't seen it. Yet. Sean. My kids think Elijah is fantastic. <laughs> also, one of your children is in Lord of the Rings. Ah, true. Yes, lovely alley. At the very alley, yes. At the very, the last shot of the last scene of the last film, little, little Eleanor comes running down the path, and um, she was mischievous and wouldn't listen to me. You know, I'm a second generation performer. My mother is very famous actress, Patty Duke. And I'm, thank you. Thank you very much. And then we get down to New Zealand and now I'm gonna pass the torch and I'm holding her and she won't stop giggling and playing with my my uh, You can actually see in the brooch. film there's no there's no um, you don't see Sam what what Sam actually says, but you can tell that Sean, when he's putting Ali down, says Okay, now walk through that door, <laughs> do as you're told. Well, she kept picking my brooch, you know, and my elven brooch, and giggling at it. And I'm thinking, like, this is terrible. And Peter walks up to her and says, Allie, and she looked at him, he says, now, I want you, when your dad walks up and you pick him up, I want you to, you know, hug him, and then when he puts you down, run. And she said, okay. And he said, you can do that. She said, yes. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> wasn't dad, you know? No, he was a director. She she wants a career. She knew that, that listen to the director. <laughs> She's in a movie now. She's in a movie now. It's the Eddie Murphy movie that's uh, the Christmas movie. Oh, Christmas movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah Candy Kid Lane. She has a killer moment in that movie. It is like, yeah, I'm very, very proud. She looks different because she's 27, not two anymore. I'm not sure she's recognizable from Lord of the Rings, but yes. Anyhow, there, I just gave a plug to my daughter's... What was that? Yeah, nice, son. I'm excited to see it. My son, my son is 17, and he's here, over there. He's over here somewhere. Neil Twizel. Twizel. Uh, and uh, he, he's never seen Lord of the Rings. Wait, he, Jack has still not seen Lord of the Rings? I think he's seen the Fellowship, but he doesn't know how it ends. He's playing that magic game of Lord of the Rings just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I don't believe this. Has he really not seen that? He really, he's, he's about to finish high school and about to go to college to study film, and he hasn't seen the Lord of the Rings! It's it's not the, kids. No. the worry is, what if he's seen it but like really didn't feel comfortable telling you? Yeah, maybe. He's like, the other three hobbits are good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mine's watched it when they came to visit me shooting um, uh, 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 Stranger Things in Atlanta. And, uh, see what I did there, guys? You just slip it in. He just dropped a little name right there. Pop another franchise in Just drop it like that. But they came, and when I say they, I mean uh, Elizabeth and Bella, who are now 21 and 18, but this was several years ago, and uh, season two of Stranger Things. And we were in the hotel, and we turned on the television, and it was on TNT. So we watched the third film with commercials. <laughs> Which, it, it, no, but yeah, it does. Well, no, they cut stuff out. It's terrible. But they, they, because they hadn't seen the first two, and we were coming in halfway into it. They hadn't seen the first two. I know. They were starting with the, they were the little, TNT they were, version of edited it version of Return of the King. It wasn't like we planned it. Right, right, it just right, worked right, out that way. But I, but um, and Bella, when she when I said, oh look what's on, and Christine, my wife, she's like, she's the, the perfect politician. She's waiting to see what does the husband want, what do the children want, and she's deciding where she's going to be the referee. Because the, the little one's like, no, I don't want to watch it. No, no, no. No, 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 no
Like we're like we're gonna force her to like you know like the guy in uh, Orange, Clockwork Orange with his eyes open. <laughs> and so, and Christine says, "Well, let's let's just for a second, let's just see what it is." And I'm sitting there in the middle of the bed, like, "Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! They're gonna watch it, you know." And Elizabeth, who's the middle kid, she just starts looking, like watching it, like really watching it. And then when we get to the commercials, I'm able to explain things to Bella, and she's not scared because I'm explaining it to her. It's the worst way to watch it. But at the end of it, and the, the film is over, and Elizabeth keeps looking at me, like, give me the side eye. And afterwards I said, well, what do you, what do you think? She says, Dad, you're like the main guy. <laughs> Through the list, she goes, but no, but dad, you're so good. Aww. And I was like, you really, you really think so? And she's like, yeah, I do. I was like, so you think I'm good? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, but I mean, you, you really think I'm good at it? You like what I did? <laughs> she's like, dad, you were really good for like two or three days. So you thought I was good? <laughs> yeah, no, I thought you were, but I mean, honestly, really, like, no, you really were good, dad. And then finally, she's like, okay, last time, you were really good, dad. Okay, we're not allowed to talk about it anymore. <laughs> So the main character of the film, Samwise Gamgee. No, I don't believe he had the ring, though. So it makes me wonder, for those of you who didn't have the ring, how do you think your character would have acted had they had that responsibility and needed to take the ring to Mordor themselves? I think I think maybe all hobbits, uh, you know, have a quite innate ability to be close to something that powerful and not be swayed by it. Um, I'm not sure if Mary and Pippin have the right amount of intellect to make a smart decision, but I think we do have that hobbity sense of just a goodness running through our system where we'd, we'd be all right. You'd probably eat it. Well, I, I think they'd probably have sold it in the, in the Franks and Pony. Yeah. Yeah. What about the, pa the Palantir? Times. The Palantir's like the ring a little. Yeah, I don't think we'd have done as well as Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it would be an exciting movie. Yeah, it'd be a fun version. Sam. Lord of the Dipshits. Sam. <laughs> Lord of the Dipshits. I feel like they would have just used it to their advantage, you know? Like, to be invisible, to get into Farmer Maggot's fields, you know? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Samwise is a ring bearer. When he thinks, when Frodo's been stung by Shelob and he thinks, and Sam thinks Frodo is dead, he he carries the mission on, and then up in the Tower of Kira Thungle, he gives it, Frodo demands it back, <laughs> he's not even nice about it. <laughs> Give me the ring now. So, but then, as I understand it, and this is something I'm really not comfortable with, and I really don't understand, and you so only an expert, feel free to shout out, uh, or you appendix people, but uh, he gets afforded the right to go to the Grey Havens because he was yes. a ring yes. bearer, right? Yes. But what about Rosie? So, no, right? So I was a really quick note. Sam, Sam would, I think Sam would want to stay, but you know, have his resting place next to wherever Rosie is. But I'm not Tolkien, I didn't write it, so I don't know. Do you think when you went there you became immortal though, from going there? Well, I did, I don't know if Sam did. <laughs> oh, you mean like you're gonna go to like to 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 the Grey Havens like it's Magic Mountain or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I went to the Grey Havens and it was awesome, and I rode the rides and I talked to some of the old people who live forever. But I'm like, woo, gotta get back. <laughs> That'd be awesome. It's a one-way trip, I think. So something I couldn't help but notice it was in the back. You guys were talking about Grand Theft Auto Six. So yeah. it makes me wonder. What games are you guys into currently? And Elijah, have you played League of Legends yet with Dom and Billy? <laughs> I have not. No, he has not. I, I have not. Read some. I haven't gotten past the tutorial. Uh, currently, um, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Woo! I'm loving it. It's so fun. <laughs> uh, video games. Um, I just downloaded something on my phone that I saw on TikTok where it's like, it's uh, you're shooting at these barrels. You know what? Like shooting the barrels? Yeah. 
I'm gonna get a lot more commercials for those kind of games now, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, I haven't played video games in a while. I've been, I've been doing union stuff. Drum, drum stuff. Woo! Yeah. Billy and I play League of Legends. We've been playing since COVID. Um, we're basically professional. We're considering moving to either Korea or China next year. Because <laughs> um, the, the actual kind of local system over there is a little bit more hardcore, and Billy and I are quite hardcore at this point. <laughs> Uh, I got the new Spider-Man game waiting at home for me tonight to play on the PlayStation 5. Sometimes when I'm playing League of Legends, I am so good that people on the other team and my team will say things like, please never play this game again. <laughs> Sell your computer. I have said that. You are the worst Heimerdinger I have ever seen. These are just some of the things people say to me online. But he rises above it and he's always victorious. I've never played a game with you where you've lost. I don't think I've ever lost, do No, me. no. <laughs> but it is, it is a strange thing because at least from my point of view, Elijah's one of the major people in my life that brought me back into computer games or video games as you guys say over here. I played a little bit when I was like 12, 13, but then stopped until I was 23, moved to LA. We're talking about this today. And I said to Elijah, we were hanging out, and I said, I need to buy a DVD player because I don't have any way of watching anything on my TV. And Elijah said, why don't you buy a PlayStation 2? And I said, you misunderstood what I just said. I need to buy a DVD player. And Elijah said, a PlayStation 2 is a DVD player and a games player. I did that, started playing Grand Theft Auto 3, and then I've been in this uh, video game tear since then. But Billy and I both think that Elijah would absolutely love League of Legends. You just don't have time right now because you have tiny little children. I do have little children, yeah. 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 We well, just I can't love, get him to play. Could no, everyone yeah, no. please email Elijah Woods? Yeah. Elijah, Elijah, Elijah Woods. Elijah Woods. <laughs> <laughs> and say, please play League of Legends no, you with your friends. Right? Your eldest, your son, at one point will turn that corner where he's interested in League of Legends and you'll be like, I have a couple of friends that might be able to join us. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they and you, and you won't have the millennial disconnect of knowing what the machine is capable of. You'll know. Yeah. So, so I did a, an advert commercial. <laughs> that was so good. That was Thank very you. good. So uh, for a Sea of Thieves, <laughs> the pirate game. Yeah, yeah. I, I played a, a museum curator dressed up in the kind of like skipper outfit nice. and I'm, let, I'm giving people a tour of the museum and all of the, the art pieces that we're looking at are elements of the game and then I tried to play the game we'll just leave it <laughs> speaking of, um, of C's has, has anyone played Dredge? you know Dredge? No. Dredge? Dredge is awesome I just started that as well those guys from Twice will have <laughs> This is what happens with Elijah. He'll say something like Dredge, and we all go, I don't know. And then six months from now, everyone and their sister's playing Dredge, and he's moved on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. That's one of the cool things about being friends with him. There's always some shit that he knows that you're like, how does he know? How do you know the things you know? I, 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 he doesn't know. I don't know. I don't know. This is actually dumb. Uh, yes, yeah, it's not. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. I love this. Elijah, Billy, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Billy, your League of Legends skills might be questionable at best, but something that you and Dom are very good at is eating the world, to my understanding. Oh, yeah. So, what I want to know from both of you, especially but everyone here, is give us the best meal in New Zealand. The best meal that we've had in New Zealand? Yes. Well, I think, you know, a best meal isn't just the food. It's the company, and you know, it's a, you were you you were in at this meal. I was at that meal. Yeah. No, you're joking. My my favourite thing is they do a thing in New Zealand called the hummy. Uh, it's an ancient Maori way of cooking, where they dig a big hole, and then they put all this meat and vegetables in the hole with hot rocks. And then the hot rocks cook the meat and the vegetables over sort of three and four hours while everybody's drinking and singing songs. And, and then you dig this hole back up and all the meat and the vegetables is there cooked 
and uh, that was probably my favourite. That was very yummy. There was, a re there was a restaurant in Wellington, which I don't think is there anymore, which was my favourite, called Kopi, K-O-P-I. It was a Malaysian restaurant, and they used to make this roti, kind of a, a very, you know, shallowly fried bread, and then serve it with a spicy peanut sauce, and I just lived on that when I was in New Zealand. So, those are our two favourites, but we just, we're just about to finish the first season of Billy and Don Eat the World. We went to... We went to England, Scotland, California, Texas, Japan. We'll go to Switzerland in a few days, and then that will be playing wherever you live, I would think, sometime in the early spring. And I hope you enjoy it. So do I. I just want to offer an endorsement because I've watched them both eat for 20 years, and they are expert eaters. Yeah, yeah expert yeah. eaters. I do it three times a day. I'm great at it. That's all. Yeah, that's about it. So I work for a fandom, and Fandom is, if you ever search something for a wiki page, that's basically fandom, it's wiki. So we asked them for questions for you guys, and this one is especially for Elijah. Um, if you could ever play a more obscure Hobbit character, to all of you, like Bull Roar Took, Lothos Sackville Baggins, Fatty Bulger, Farmer Maggots, who would it be? I was gonna say the Sackville Bagginses, because they're real pieces of shit. <laughs> And, and Bilbo's always trying because they want they want back in. They're trying they're trying they're after Bilbo's things. I don't know. There's something there. I want to know about the Sackville Baggins. Why why are they why are they so greedy? Why are they trying to inherit all of Bilbo's things? I don't know. <laughs> this is, there seems to be a story there. I think that's a that'd be a good series. <laughs> Mischievous hobbits well, ransacking stuff. I mean, I love that. Some kind of yeah shire. You had the ring too long, shine. man, if that's what you're gravitating towards. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, if you had to guess, as among it, this is fandom wiki pages, what do you think is the most searched wiki page for Lord of the Rings? The one that people click on the most and want to look up the most. Well, is there like a wiki page that's like Lord of the Rings uh, dash movies? Right, it would be like characters, like it could be uh, like it could be Elijah Woods page, and it could be Frodo Baggins, right? So something like that. What do you think people are looking up the most? Orlando Bloom's ass. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. It's gotta be Gollum, right? It's uh, Sauron. Sauron. Yeah, I like their villains. That's the problem with people. They just gravitate towards the evil. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping it was Bag End. I was hoping it was like, you know, the Prancing Pony or something like that. But no, Sauron. Guy gets all the play. He did, he did start as an angel. So I have one more question before we get to fan questions from you guys, because... I do know that. I asked my friends for questions for you guys, and this was the weirdest one I got, so I feel like I have to ask. Okay. Uh, when you reach the appropriate age, would you be open to a Middle-earth version of Golden Girls starring the Four Hobbits? <laughs> I would love for someone out there to find a project for the four of us. We love spending yeah. time with each other, we love working with each other. In all seriousness, yeah. It would be a great thing to um, explore that again, because we do have some nice uh, some nice friendship and chemistry over all these years. Yeah, we would love to find something. Before one of us dies. I mean, I just watched an episode of Golden Girls, and I, which one of us is Rue McClanahan? That's what I want to know. Uh, I think we're there, people. I think we're the What? Oh, I thought so. The Twizel people! Twizel! There's gonna be Twizel t shirts after this. You know it. Have you guys seen the t shirts? Have you seen the t shirts of our uh, convention journey over the last two years? You can get, you can actually get, we went, we did like eight or nine of them last year together. Not t shirts, we mean conventions. Conventions, and then. We, we made a t-shirt. We made a t-shirt. A tour t-shirt. A, a, a tour, yeah. On the back it shows all the places we were on the front. It's got this VW van with all well the middle of the lo locales. That we it's visited. awesome, you guys. It's, it's awesome. Time. Yeah. Do we get money out of it? We well, we get some, but well, also one, one, tree, one tree one tree planted. So if you buy the t-shirt, they also plant a tree on your behalf, which is a wonderful thing. More eggs. Yeah, the shirt is awesome. What do you say? Alright, well I have a great. Well, I have more questions, but let's open up to you guys. So, we have a uh, mic here somewhere in the front. So, um, how about right there with, right there. Yeah, with the half sleeve. 
when will friendship on you come back? That's my question for Billy and Dom. I bought Dominic? this. I bought this T-shirt and you guys canceled. So I've been crying oh, no. every day you since. You bought the T-shirt in December last year, and then it canceled. And then a question on a positive note for all of you guys: Is there some piece of work you've made that you wish was talked about more? rather than Lord of the Rings that you would love to say something about because I know you've done voice acting and all kinds of things. Well, unfortunately yeah. Billy and I have to be slightly cryptic about the Friendship Podium, which is the podcast that we did together. Nothing to do with us, darling. We wanted to continue. I would in, I would implore you to do a little Google search as to what happened to the Friendship Podium and you will find out that certain criminal uh, things occurred <laughs> that we are not on your part. No, no, we were not criminals. It has nothing um, to do with taking the money, right? But it's a good t-shirt. It's a great t-shirt. It in, is a good t-shirt. All right, go ahead. And then in terms of projects that um, that maybe I enjoy people talking to me about that is not Lord of the Rings based. I did a nature show for three years called Wild Things, which I really, really like because yeah. it kind of hopefully changes people's ideas about animals that a lot of people are scared of. In fact, today, Someone came over to me in line when I was signing and says, and said, I do not kill spiders anymore because of the show. And I was like, that's the reason why I'm oh, in the show. That. So wild things is awesome. 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 I'm in a band called Bee Cake. A wonderful band. And uh, we try to make people who are scared of music not scared of music. <laughs> and someone said that they were going to kill a guitarist and then they didn't because of really? that. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you follow that? Yeah. Well, you do DJing or did, right? So that's, that seems like a perfect segue. I do play records, yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, well, um, there's a film I, I worked on uh, a number of years ago called I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. Oh, uh, it's a great film. But I really love um, with Melanie Linsky and Macon Blair wrote and directed it. I adore him and I, I adored the experience of making it and love the movie. And then on the other side, I, I you know, for the last 11, 12 years, I uh, have been producing films under the SpectreVision banner. There's a movie that we produced that when people come up to me at these sort of events and, and reference that movie, I get very excited. It's called The Greasy Strangler. <laughs> If you, my favorite film. If you know, you know. Uh, I, I beseech you to seek out The Greasy Strangler. If you haven't seen it, I'll tell you no more. It's great. Oh nice. Sean? Everyone knows everything that Sean's done. Rudy! 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 Rudy. Rudy. They just, uh, they just... Am I allowed to say dropped? I'm 50 year old, 52 year old man. Can I say dropped? From the show. Uh, Rudy... Uh, director's cut just dropped, I think, last week, and there's 15 minutes of additional footage. Oh, scenes. that's and right. Everyone yeah, D David Ansbaugh, the director, called me, and I was in Cleveland or something. We just talked and cried on the phone with each other. He said they let him do whatever he wanted, and he spent months just kind of marinating in the movie. And he was telling me scenes that he found that I don't even remember shooting. And you scored like seven or eight touchdowns in this version. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, please really, from the beginning. Really <laughs> actually plays a game. <laughs> No, but uh, but that's what I mean. I don't know. There's I actually have like things out now. I, I play Scrooge in a in a, a, a podcast of of Christmas Carol. Um, nice. I'd say my accent is uneven, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's really I, I loved it. It was fun to listen to, and I have a movie coming out. To, what's the date today? The second. second. The second. Maybe today. Called the second. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Called the shift. The Shift is a uh, sci-fi movie where uh, with Neil McDonough and um, there's an F in that word, guys. The Shift, F in that word. Shift, and there's another Christmas thing. Any, I don't, I, you know what? I barely remember anything. People come up to me and ask me to sign things, and I'm like, oh my god, like I couldn't remember the title of the baseball movie I'm in. I don't know. I remember Stranger Things at least. I remember Stranger yeah. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have a new answer. They say, are you going to be in Stranger Things? And I've been saying, no, I'm dead. But why couldn't they do a flashback? Wait, that's, that's a spoiler. To a happier time with, I know why they won't. Because it's going to be Hopper and Joyce. And they're not going to want a flashback to a time when she was actually happy. <laughs>
Hello, uh, can you please describe your love for Ian McKellen and look at me when you do that, please? Uh, you know, I just saw Ian McKellen about a month ago. I went, to, I went to London and saw his play. And I said the same thing that I say to Ian at some point when I've spent some time with him, which is, Ian, if I'm as cool as you are when I'm your age, I'll be a happy man. He's just... He's just the coolest man. He just he's friendly to everyone, he's kind to everyone. He has a lovely group of friends around him. He's still an incredible actor, generous, affectionate, massive hands. I mean extraordinarily big. Like a and shovel. Soft. He should really have been a goalkeeper. Soft, really soft hands. Yeah, he's a lovely man. I co-sign <laughs> what he said. Thank you. Uh, how about right there, the red carabiner? Or Caribbean, I'm sorry, Red Lanyard. I get words mixed up, it's okay. Hey guys, um, have you um, played any of the uh, Lord, of the, Lord of the Rings video games that have come out over the years? I've only played the ones that we that were in uh, direct adaptations of the films that we were, we were making, um, but not any of the subsequent, like, Battle for Middle Earth, those sorts of games. I haven't played any of those, but apparently they're great. And Kumail Nanjiani does a voice in one of them as an orc. Um, there's a really great... Uh, do you guys... Do you know the Clueless Gamer? It's great. Um, <laughs> uh, Conan O'Brien's sort of segment about... Because he doesn't know how to play video games, and it's he has guests on playing video games. And there's an amazing one with K Kumail that you should watch. Because... K so Kumail plays an orc in this thing, and they... they, they he, he thought they were going to change his voice to sound like an orc, and they didn't. <laughs> So he just sounds like Kumail, kill, killing you? It's, it's wonderful. You should watch the, the episode's really funny. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just not that good at the ones where they're spinning and spinning all the time. You know, they're like spinning and then the staff comes out and the light shoots and it's spinning. I don't like all the spinning. What's all the spinning about? I don't know. It's, there. it's gameplay. It's an in-game play. I don't know. I like the story ones that are like really... Their art, like some of the video games, they just look so. Oh, love Skyrim! Woo! So beautiful, that world. <laughs> yeah, I, Billy and I are. Well, we're, all four of us are playable characters in what was that? It was an EA game, a Lord of the Rings game. Two Towers, wasn't it? Might have been Two Towers. That one was really. Return of the King. Return of the King. King. Sam and Frodo you can play, I think, from the start. You have to unlock a few things to get to Merry and Pippin. I played that a little bit, but apart from that, no, not much. Yeah, I played a little bit of that one just to find myself. Because <laughs> it's fun. But I just don't like the spinning. Yeah, I'm spinning too. I don't care if he's just saying it. I agree with him completely. Uh, now, just so you all have a taste of what it's like to be in the booth when you're recording audio for a video game, it sounds like this. Left, left, down! Like that, it goes on for hours. And it's true actually because, um, spin, spin, and just spin, stop spinning. <laughs> when we, uh, when we record, you know the song in Return of the King that Pippin sings uh -huh. uh, tonight? So when, when we recorded that, there was wind machines and stuff, so it was, I had to re-record it because there was too much noise. And I was supposed to record it the day after we recorded the video game. But after five hours of, run this way, get down, stop spinning, all that, <laughs> I had no voice and I couldn't sing it. So they had to re-record, they said, don't worry, we'll re-record that another time. And I was back home in Scotland by the time they could record it. So they said, could you come down to Abbey Road and record it there? <laughs> fans of the Beatles oh, yeah. and I got to record that song with, an, with the orchestra and Howard Shore and, ah. and got to sing it in, in Abbey Road which was brilliant and there was no spinning none <laughs> I think Sean just spins while he records the O lines that's why right uh, so one more question time for one more question Last question, right there. Yeah, 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 last question. I can't believe this sea of people in this hall right now. Thank you guys so much. All the way from Twice.
Zoom. Beatles, um, I know they were wanting to make a, a movie about Lord of the Rings. Which Beatle would play which Hobbit in your opinion? For um, There's no opinion about it. I think it, they sure, Ringo they, was Sam, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, they'd already cast it. Who, who, who was playing what again? John, yeah, so it was John, John, was, John was Gollum, Gollum. Paul was Frodo, George was Gandalf, and Ringo was just bits in between, just filling in stuff, you know. Sam. Sam. I think if it was if it was just playing hobbits, you'd have to have John being Frodo because he was the kind of quote unquote leader of the group, you know, the guy. Well, who, I think it'd be Paul. <laughs> what, what, what? You think it'd be Paul? Yeah. Paul was a leader of the group. No, he's a leader, but John is older and he seems to pull rank a little bit more. But listen, I'm willing. You're the boss, Elijah. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> Ringbearer, he's the John of the group. He's the John. Yeah, it's either John or. Or uh, Maka for Frodo, right? Yes. Who's the most spiritual of the hobbits? George. Could be uh, of the hobbits. Of the hobbits, not of the of the people. Don't know. Really. Maybe Sam. So if that were the case, it would be George, right? Right, right. George. So who we got left? We've got Ringo and one of Ringo and Paul George. Or... Who's the I would, you could argue that maybe Ringo plays more of a, of a easier going, and sillier character. Ringo's Pippin. Ringo's Pippin. Ringo's Pippin. Hey, I'm John Lennon. I'm okay with that. You are not. <laughs> the rumor too is that um, that Q, they have tapped Kubrick to direct the film, yeah. which is such a wild thing to think about. Or well, certainly approached him. I don't know if yeah. he gave them a yes, but certainly maybe approached not. him. Yeah. Weren't they going to well. make Yellow Submarine again? Yeah, yeah, Billy and I auditioned for it. I, I made I, Billy have a laughing fit. I had to say, we were in an audition together with Victoria Burroughs, yeah, by the way, as well. who was the American cast and director of Lord of the Rings, so she knew as well. She brought us in. I was playing John Lennon, Billy was playing Ringo, and I was supposed to come over to him and say, how's your equilibrium ring? And I could not say it. So I'd come over and go, how's the equilibrium? <laughs> and Billy would laugh like he did now, and then it, they'd go, reset, and I'd go again, how's the equilibrium? And, after, and we were both laughing, and eventually Victoria Burroughs, who kind of vouched for us and, was, and his friends with us, kind of said, Okay, that's fine, guys. If you could please stop laughing, it's costing, you know, Bob Zemeckis a lot of money. And we're like, Okay, we could not get it together. I started sweating down my back. Billy was in hysterics. Needless to say, we did not get the part. <laughs> it, was a, it was the funniest one. It was. I loved it. It was brilliant. You know, Oh yes, yeah. and you can't stop. I know it's an embarrassing thing on a on a film set too. It's it definitely happened where you Who's just can't can get it together, time? and you're like, I'm so sorry, I really want to get it together, but I get so mad. Yeah, yeah. Who's the guy in the cloud? Our guy in the cloud in Yellow Submarine. Dana. That's why I auditioned. Oh nice. I can't remember. That would have been wild though. Yeah, Robert Zemeckis was going to do a motion capture version of Yellow Submarine with various people playing the the Beatles, and then you know sort of. Re realizing that world in motion capture. It would have been really interesting. It would have been great. There was a lot of spinning in the audition. Do you remember? Oh my God. She comes again to spin around. I remember some saying, <laughs> yes, you're done you know this, but you know what I mean. All right, well, with that, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Please give another round of applause.